Hello everybody, this is Serbot42 and this is just a video on my point of view for Resident Evil and how I uh, I always felt that there was a divide between the old fans and new fans and just doing a little bit of research it turns out that it's kind of true and uh, I just wanted to give my point from a old school fan I'll call it of Resident Evil. So I'll be covering three main parts about this which was which is, sorry, uh, how I was introduced, why some of the older audiences don't like the newer games, and why I currently stand now with the series. So, without further ado, uh, let me just get to the first point. I remember first noticing this divide when I used to go to Google Plus for like all my forum needs, because I wasn't really much of a forum person anymore as I was before, but I do like the aspect of, you know, doing all that stuff on my phone because it's just like on the go and I joined this uh, Google Plus Club member thing whatever it was a Resident Evil one and all the people there they loved Resident Evil like everybody does right but it was always about Resident Evil 5 and above they rarely talked about Resident Evil 1 through 4 sometimes 4 but it's like the the old stuff Resident Evil 1 2 3 and the uh, the not spin-offs, but the, the side series games like uh, Resident Evil Survivor and Dead Aim. They, they never talked about those. And when I bring up points and stuff, it's like they liked what I said, but they were more about the new school stuff, I'll call it. Not the old school. And I noticed that uh, there's not a lot of fans anymore that like the new, the new stuff in in some forums it's it's a lot it's like the new audience um, a lot of the old stuff I kinda now see on YouTube more than anything but doing a little bit of research on YouTube it, it showed me that there's a lot of toxicity between the fan bases which I didn't know uh, I'm kinda glad I'm not into that stuff cuz you know the hell am I gonna be doing <laughs> just posting on YouTube comments but uh, that's the first time when I was in Google Plus, I, I kind of noticed that the stuff I like, people weren't really like talking about anymore. So how did I become a Resident Evil fan? Uh, I'll keep it quick, because that's not what this video is about. But uh, a long time ago, I believe around high school, middle school, I believe it was high school, I, uh, I used to have a friend named Jimmy, and one day he told me about this game called Resident Evil 2. And he would not stop talking about it. He like described the entire beginning cinematic to me. And at the time I didn't know what was up. I didn't know what Resident Evil was. So um, yeah, after a while, I think like a week or, or two weeks later, uh, I went shopping with my mom. And then we stopped by a Toys R Us because I wanted to see what was there. And I was looking at all the games and then I saw Resident Evil 2. And at that moment, like... Like, my mom caught me at the perfect time because I had just gotten the sticker or whatever, the little paper, to look at the game title. And not even like three seconds of me holding it, she asked me if she want, if I wanted it. And I was like, well, sure, why not? <laughs> she was she was just offering it to me out of nowhere. I was like, okay, yeah, I'll buy it. So, or she'll buy it. So she bought it for me. And then um, when I booted the game up, it was freaking awesome. I didn't know how to play. So it took like four deaths for me to get to uh, the kendo gun shop and figure out the controls and that's the first time I got introduced to uh, tank controls so I remember playing that it was gonna be one of those scary games and I, th I believe uh, it was when the hands went through the, the RPD office that grab you that scared me and I was like oh it's gonna be one of those games <laughs> and uh, well long story short I'm a huge fan obviously and uh, I immediately went online and there was already a whole bunch of people that shared my love for Resident Evil and after I beat the game several times and you know and try to look for everything you know what else is there to do but to like start <laughs> making up theories and like guessing what's gonna happen for the third game just you know back then I was huge on forums and it was just an audience that I could talk to and it was amazing really and I remember when uh, they announced Resident Evil 3 everybody just went crazy <laughs> and uh, 
I had to kill time for, for the title to come out, so <laughs> I would play the, the game extensively, part two, over and over again, and the first one as well. And uh, it got up to the point where I, I found the, the Versus books, and I did everything, that whole tour guide of Resident Evil 2 demo. And uh, the footage that you're seeing right now is from a video that I planned to make. I wanted to break the Resident Evil 2 demo down and just show it to people what parts crash and what doesn't. This was, I made this all the way back in like 2007, 2008. Um, I just ended up never doing it. <laughs> it was, uh, and the thing about it too was, um, I, I did this back in like 99, but I thought about putting it on YouTube back in like 2000. Eight, I think 2009 I believe so pretty much what I did was uh, when I wanted to put this online I grabbed my VCR tape that I was doing all my recordings on because this was off of the PS2 and I would connect the VCR to my uh, camcorder and then I'd record the, the footage from the TV off of the camcorder <laughs> so I had the videos ready but like I had to uh, organize everything, but I just got lazy, and it never happened. I might do it soon. I don't know when, but I mean, I want to do it again now that, um, well, through the power emulation, <laughs> so it could be clearer and, and crisper. Um, but that's something for another day. Uh, as I stated before, uh, I became a huge fan, and I became a fan all the way up to around Resident Evil 5. And that's the uh, second part I'm going to cover here. So the main point of this video is why, and I'll say some, of the older audience does not like the new Resident Evil. Because I know there's there's people that love the old stuff and the new stuff. Um, to be black and white, I'm not one of those people. Um, long story short, it's just comfortable. I, I guess you can say we were comfortable with what we had um, like one of the main points for me it's a uh, well not one of the main points but I'll just say my points and they're not in any specific order um, the lack of ammo <laughs> is practically non-existent in the newer games it's just uh, it's just a shoot 'em up now and I'm, I'm thinking of Resident Evil 5 because that was the last game that I've played the franchise well not that one but the um, I'll get to that in a bit but I'm just gonna point out stuff from 5 that made me not want to play Resident Evil 6 or 7 or any other ones um, yeah it's just a lack of ammo it wasn't just to make the game harder but it, it really and people have heard this before it's um, it makes you ration what you have. It makes you really think if an enemy is worth dodging or if it's worth killing. You know, depending on if you keep going on that haul over and over again. Um, one thing a lot of people talk about is the fixed camera angles. And while I do love it that they're fixed camera angles in the old ones, it it was really like an artistic point of view. And also, uh, it forced you not to see what's around the corner because they were all just pre-rendered images. And you don't know what's around the corner, whereas in like a third person or first person, you could go like on the side of the wall and you can shift the camera so that you can see what's ahead, but the monsters can't see you. And um, that, that, I don't know, like um, the old school ones, they forced you to go through because again, there's just uh, pre-rendered images. Um, the zombies now, they, uh, they became possessed people. They're not zombies anymore. And, um, what's it called? I, uh, I remember this. I was playing the demo for Resident Evil 6 at Comic Con. And I played Leon's story, which had the zombies, and which was kind of cool. It was like a, like a, you know, like, hey, we're bringing back the slow zombies. And I was like, alright, it's kind of cool, you know? And I was like, this might be fun. And then I played Chris's side. And it was just Call of Duty. That's all it was. 
And it's not that Call of Duty is a bad franchise. It's just that I did not want to play a Call of Duty game when I play the a title called Resident Evil. It was, it was. Uh, I remember playing as Chris, and I was just shooting other people. I mean, there were zombies because they, you know, they they just fall after like three shots, but they they weren't zombies to me. It was just I was just playing a an online shooter, a one player online shooter. Um, also, uh, the current monsters now made the T virus and the G virus obsolete. Which, um, I know for, like, Resident Evil 4, that game was amazing. But I also, after playing it for a while, I kind of felt like, how is Capcom going to go back to the old version of Resident Evil where the zombies would slowly go towards you and, you know, I don't think they could go back after that. I mean, story-wise, why would a company want to go back to slow zombies when you got possessed people? And um, what also took away a lot of the scare factor, besides, you know, just having plenty of ammo and it just being an action game now, is that uh, the the newer, the characters that, that we play as, they, they have like these martial arts moves, like Leon and Chris, they have these moves where you can shove characters off, you can like kick them, you do kick flips and all this, and it's, uh, it's no longer like a, like a, like if they were just regular pedestrians where they just, you know, they can only push away after they got bit. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's mostly stuff like that. What I'm trying to get at is that the, um, the mechanics of the game changed drastically. And while I know that Capcom did this because they have to appeal to the, the current generation, it kind of leaves us in, in the dust, you know, like, um, and with not with good reason but I, I can see why they did it it's just uh, it's kind of like somebody made a, a point oh, an argument that the reason why the we kept having like these these new Sonic games was because the old ones nobody liked them anymore and uh, that's necessarily not true and you know the biggest example is Sonic Colors no, sorry not Colors uh, Sonic Mania that really like brought the audience back but it took a lot of bad games for them to realize like hey you know <clears throat> it's uh sonic 1 2 3 and knuckles and and sonic adventure 1 and 2 you know it's um you know we kind of want that back and it's the same with resident evil it's not so much that it's an outdated play style it's just that the they have to make it appealing for the audience and Obviously, they're not going to do that. They're going to... They, they chose the uh, third-person shooter route, which, understandably so. You know, it's it's a game about shooting zombies. It's uh, Resident Evil 4 now. It's Resident Evil 5. It's going more towards that, like, uh, shooter route. I mean, it's only natural to think that way. That and... You know, I, I don't know. It's just a lot of people, for some reason, do not like the tank controls. As you can see right here, it's just some people hate it and they just turn them off. And going into this uh, third person view, it kind of took that away in a sense. I mean, it's still there. I don't know about Resident Evil 6. I don't remember if that had tank controls, but it's um, the newer the newer uh, releases, or I'm sorry, the the port releases of Resident Evil 0 and Resident Evil 1 had had the options of tank controls or 3D controls and people s have said that they have tried these games out because they changed the controls and that might be another reason why they just Capcom's just given up the whole um, uh, what's it called tank controls and, and the and the uh, pre-rendered view mode I think it's it was natural for Resident Evil to go into <clears throat> first person, third person, but at the same time, it just took away so much of what we loved from the, you know, from the old audience. Um, and uh, one of the points I do want to make is for um, Resident Evil Five. It really, 
how do you say it? I held the story with with high standards, and I know I'm not the only one, but I think that's part of why I just shook my head so many times at Resident Evil 5. It's just the stupid little things like zombies on bikes, zombies shooting, um, Wesker and his freaking Matrix moves and all that. It's just, it, it really turned me off to it. And specifically when I found out certain things about Resident Evil 6, I just, besides the demo, I just didn't even want to buy the game <laughs> when people ask me if I played it I always tell them like nah I have too much respect for the franchise which is just a jab at you know at Resident Evil 6 I'm pretty sure it's fun but it's just it's not for me and things in that game like Chris being a drunk asshole kind of ruined it for me like I don't think Chris would be like that I know it's because he lost his his friends and stuff but I don't think he would resort to that if uh, if he was that kind of person, he would have done that after the Bravo team died. Um, and also about the whole like 100 Weskers and then one of them was uh, the perfect subject or whatever it was just kind of stupid. It's, um, you know, why would this company make 100 Weskers? It's, it would have been more more believable if it was just, you know, somebody from Umbrella got hired for stars. And then they brought the stars members into the mansion. It's this whole like prodigy thing, which is kind of stupid. And then another point is, uh, why would you kill off Wesker if you're just gonna want to bring him back? And by that, I don't know. Again, I don't know anything about Resident Evil Six, but I heard that there's like a Wesker son, and I always made fun of it and just referred to it as Wesky. <laughs> um. They shouldn't kill off Wesker. It's it should have been like, it well it's it's kind of like if you kill Bowser from the Mario series. I mean you got Bowser Jr. but you're missing the big dog, <laughs> you know. Um, and that's why for me, Resident Evil Five is the last Resident Evil in the in the story, for me. And everything else is just like a spin off, because if you think about it, Resident Evil One, the very first one. It ends with Chris and Jill uh, riding off, dry, well, flying off into the sunset. And at the end of 5, when they finally do kill Wesker, you know, Chris, Jill, and Sheva, and um, Josh fly off into the sunset. <laughs> Resident Evil 1 ended that way, and Resident Evil 5 finished the story that way. That's what it is for me. I, uh... Yeah, everything else I just kind of consider a spin-off. One thing I do got to mention, um, Resident Evil 7. I first played the demo at Comic-Con, I believe it was like two years ago. And it's the one where uh, you don't play, you just like, you sit down, you put on the headset, and then you hold the controller. So you're tied up, and um, like one of your detective friends' heads rolls out. And you see like this witch looking chick. Like, you know, she she does all this weird stuff. It it was really freaking awesome. It was uh, it made me uncomfortable. And I was like, dude, this is awesome. But it was more of the same stuff. It was more Resident Evil, you know, shoot the zombie that's flying at you through parachutes, getting on turret guns, you know, driving a boat away. But it was, uh, I liked it. <clears throat> I actually, I really liked it. But I told people, like, my impression, it's Resident Evil only in name. It was a good game. It, it really was when I played the demo. But there was nothing Resident Evil about it, you know? And then I, uh, when the game came out, I, I saw people play it on YouTube. And I was like, dude, this is really amazing. Like, it was really good. It was scary. It's something that I would be scared to do in VR. And it almost made me want to get a VR just for that. And I was waiting for the PC release. And then uh, they just had to add this. <laughs> I don't know, 
I just <laughs> they just added that dumbassery from from Resident Evil Five. Um, yeah. So I probably will play it. I'm gonna play it at, at a discount. Uh, honestly, I have not bought a new Resident Evil game since 2012. The last game that I bought in this series was Resident Evil The Mercenaries 3D for the 3DS. And that game was fun. So, um, well, I might as well just say this is my, this is where I stand currently as a Resident Evil fan. It took me a while to get used to the, the terrible story that was Resident Evil 5. With the whole, you know, like I said, the, the motorcycle magenies and, you know, the freaking the chess plane zombies. <laughs> you know, it's just, you're just fighting people now. Uh, it took me a while to get past that. The game was fun. It really is fun. But it just, it shouldn't have had a Resident Evil, like, uh, aesthetic to it. I kept telling people like they should have like revived Captain Commando or something and just give it the engine that, that Resident Evil 5 has. That would have been great. I would have loved that game. I, I still love it, you know? But it's just the fact that it's Resident Evil when it's not. It's just what really got to me. And um, yeah, like I said, I, I the last game I played was a Mercenaries 3D and that was a lot of fun too. Man, I played that addictively. And even then, I found people that would play with me online. It was amazing. <laughs> and that was the last game. I mean, the only games that I've bought since 2012 are just ports. I've bought the I've I bought the port for Resident Evil Zero and Resident Evil One, Resident Evil Four, and Code Veronica for my PlayStation Three. And I bought Resident Evil Four again for my for my uh, PC this year on Steam, just for that 60 frames per second. Um, I haven't played any of the other ones, um, honestly. And uh, Resident Evil 5, for me, is, like I said before, it's the last in the story. And what I do now, actually, I, I play Left 4 Dead 2. <laughs> and by that, I mean I play the uh, s s the campaigns that somebody remade in Left 4 Dead 2. Somebody remade Resident Evil 1, 2, 3, and Outbreak for Left 4 Dead 2 and I play those as much as I can when the author is not constantly updating the damn thing because you know when you update it the people that put it on the servers they gotta re-download it but I play that game with people whenever I can because it's the closest thing I have to old school Resident Evil that's new yeah it's first person but it's just cool walking around into a, a somewhat updated mansion and updated police station you know in Resident Evil it's it's what it's the closest thing I have to uh, the old days then it's Silent Hill which is also on Left 4 Dead 2 but uh, yeah I mean that's pretty much where I stand on Resident Evil I love all of the old games I played up to 5 I don't want to touch 6 I don't really want to play 7 I don't really care about Revelations, and I'm glad I didn't touch Raccoon City because apparently that that was terrible. <laughs> the game's standing at like three bucks right now at GameStop. It doesn't mean that the, those games are bad. The newer ones, besides the Outbreak, or whatever the the Umbrella City, whatever the one where you get to play as the Umbrella operatives. Um, actually, I did play. Now that I mentioned that, I did play Dark Side Chronicles. I loved it. <laughs> Everybody else I knew hated it. I actually loved it. I played the first one, which is the uh, the Umbrella Chronicles, but I didn't own that one. I thought those were okay. They were more like retellings. Um, I don't hate people, or I don't look down on them if they like the newer games. It's just not for me. And the point of this video is just to like, like I said before, just give my stance on it. And if I want to cut it to like one or two sentences, it would be, I like playing the games from 10, 2010 and below. And that's it. And it's because it's just not what it used to be. I mean, I guess I'm expecting the, the same old stuff, but it's uh, sadly times change and 
people don't like that stuff. Uh, so, you guys, thanks for watching. Sorry if I rambled a bit here and there. I didn't really, um, for this video, I didn't really write down what I was going to do. I kind of did, but the best thing to do is to write down what you're going to say. I didn't do it. I just kind of just went on mic and just spewed a bunch of crap. <laughs> um, yeah. I just, uh, this isn't supposed to be like a informative video or like a video that I'm supposed to take my time and do it. Like, this is kind of like a, I'm just going to get it off my chest now. I mean, if, uh, if I had a couple weeks, I would totally write down like a thesis on it. But, um, the thing is, it's not that serious for me. I love Resident Evil either way. I just don't play any of the newer stuff, as I keep saying. And, you know, I, I don't hate the fans if, if they like the newer stuff. And they don't like the older stuff, or if they just like the newer stuff more. This is just more like a... It's uh, what people on my point of view are thinking. And, I mean, I want to play the, the remake when it comes out for uh, Resident Evil 2 Remake. Obviously, I'm a sucker for Resident Evil 2, but at the same time, I just don't have my high, my hopes high for anything. I don't, I'm not getting my hopes up, I'm not like getting excited, I'm not hyped, nothing. I got Left 4 Dead 2 Resident Evil 2 campaign mod <laughs> to hold me over until Resident Evil 2 comes out, if it even comes out. Honestly, if it gets cancelled, I wouldn't be angry. I just, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, I just... Like I said, I, I'm not keeping my hopes up on anything Resident Evil. It's just, you know, I'm kind of done. I'll, I'll always play the uh, the old games on the PS1 and PS2, the GameCube, the PS3. I even have all of them on my Vita. It's just, uh, it's like its own thing. But yeah, that's currently where I stand. Uh, thanks, you guys, for putting up with my, my rambling. And uh, hopefully I'll see you on the next one.